So let us start our exploration of the C programming language by translating a few Python programs into C. So here is our first Python program and immediately it might look a little bit strange to you. This very first if condition on line 1 is code that we haven't really seen. What does this mean? Well, remember normally when we write the code that is outside any function, we de-indent it all the way to the left and as we have seen that when we execute our Python code, that code executes first. The only exception to this is if we have any define statements where we are defining certain functions, but after those definitions, we come to the first statement that is unindented and we execute from there. It turns out that style of writing what we call the top level code or the entry point into the execution of the code, that style is not really a good programming style in Python. It's better to indent that code, put it inside this special if condition. So this special if condition is saying that if the current Python program that is running is the main one, then we should start over here. This is the entry point into the whole program. The advantage of writing code this way is now someone could take this program of ours and import it into another program where they want to use that program as the main. And so the functions that we have written in our code could be used as helper functions in their code. We have seen how to import other pieces of code into our programs. Now perhaps somebody wants to import our code into their programs. If we just de-indent this and we do not keep this if condition, then they will not be able to successfully import our code into theirs and use their code as the starting point. So for those reasons, we write this particular if condition. This is a double underscore. So Python programmers often call this dunder and they read this as if dunder name is the string dunder main. This is the accepted way of writing the starting point of your code. Now this second statement is an assignment statement. We know that it is assigning x to this rather large integer value. More precisely, at this point in the code, this label x is going to label this particular integer object. And we know, by the way, integers are immutable. Now I say that it's going to label it currently at this point. Why? Because we know Python uh, variables can be dynamically reattached to some other object, perhaps a different object of type int or perhaps an object of a totally different type at some point in the future. So at this point, x labels this particular integer. Then what's happening over here is we're going to print the id of x. And because in between these two print statements, we have this reassignment to x. And because integer objects are immutable, we know that this x is going to be reattached to a different integer object. And that is why these two numbers that are going to be printed as f strings are going to be different because their IDs are going to be different. Since x was a positive integer, 3 times x is of course going to be a positive integer. So we would come into this if condition and we would print positive. As a quick reminder, remember strings in Python can be within double quotes or within single quotes. So let me save this code in a file. Since this is lecture 12, let me call that file lecture12.py. Now I'm running this on my Linux system. So there I have a program called Python 3. This is the Python 3 interpreter. So now I'm executing this Python code using my Python interpreter. That interpreter is interpreting that Python code into machine code and immediately running it on my system and that is printing these two different ID values and lastly it is printing this string positive. After the program has executed, 
I am giving another command. This is a command that you can execute from the Linux terminal. Now this next command echo dollar question mark is asking if the previous command caused any error. If the previous command did not cause any error then this echo dollar question mark will print the answer zero. So keep that in mind that if a program runs successfully by default it returns the value zero and you can check that by issuing this command at least on a Linux operating system. Now let us try and take this Python code and convert it into C. I will show you that process on Python Tutor.